And welcome back to Hannity and Combs. Critics are taking the WWE to task over Chris Benoit's tragedy. Some say steroid abuse is rampant at the organization. What role steroids played in the Benoit murder-suicide? The tragedy has made clear both how pervasive roids are in wrestling and how easy it is to obtain them. The mainstream media had somewhat of a field day with the idea that Chris Benoit murdered his family in a fit of roid rage. They invited on wrestlers to interrogate them on their own steroid use and ran with the false information that Benoit may have even been juicing little Daniel. Let's assume for a moment that he had taken some steroids. Let me ask you, have you taken steroids ever? Uh, let's talk about this, uh, the, this issue of steroids and roid rage. Is it did your understanding that is this an issue and have you seen this as a pattern among professional wrestlers? The roid rage theory is problematic for a number of reasons, not least because medical experts still debate about whether the phenomenon even exists, or if it does exist, that it's solely down to steroids and not pre-existing mental disorders or a negative effect of combining steroids with other substances there is no reliable scientific data on the matter. When you talk about roid rage, roid rage for me is a, uh, uh, a pie in the sky theory that's thought up by people that have no business discussing the frame of mind of an elite but, physical athlete. But that's athlete. not the point. It, uh, look, I, I, I understand your desire to be number no, one in your No, the point is you're field. trying to say I overall that be... taking steroids is bad and I don't think it is. In research published by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports, it's concluded that anticipation of the aggressiveness related to steroid use may lead to actual violent acts and become, in effect, an excuse for aggression. They did not believe that there is a causal relationship between roid rage and steroids. Accounts of what was found in Benoit's home are also sketchy because the investigators and media often use the catch-all term of steroids rather than the actual substance listed on the packaging. Steroids are not all one thing, and their individual effects vary. Also, regardless of what was or wasn't discovered in the home, testosterone was the only steroid actually present in his body, according to toxicology which means it's the only substance that can even be considered in a roid rage theory. Growth hormone, for example, is not a precursor to a rise in testosterone. Although testosterone was found in Chris Benoit's urine, there is no evidence of any other of the illegal types of steroids or the whole laundry list of anabolic steroids that are out there to be used, said the medical examiner. The presence of testosterone alone even could be an indicator that he was being treated for testicular insufficiency. Many older men, particularly those that have abused steroids in the past, go through testosterone replacement therapy because their body can no longer produce adequate amounts naturally. So could the testosterone in Benoit's system have caused roid rage? Not necessarily. While it's long been believed that testosterone causes male aggression, Modern studies show that on its own, elevated levels are not actually conducive to aggression. Supraphysiological doses of testosterone when administered to normal men in a controlled setting do not increase angry behaviour, concludes a 1996 paper. In fact, some data suggests it is those low in testosterone that exhibit anger and aggression, and replacement therapy restores the balance. When the men were given testosterone replacement therapy and were asked to complete questionnaires about their mood several times over the course of two months, their general sense of well-being improved markedly. Their anger and agitation decreased, their sense of optimism and friendliness heightened, reported the New York Times. Recent studies even suggest elevated testosterone levels can result in better thought out and fairer decisions rather than rash and risky behaviour as previously assumed. New scientific evidence refutes the preconception that testosterone causes aggressive, egocentric and risky behaviour. A study at the Universities of Zurich and Royal Holloway London with more than 120 experimental subjects has shown that the sexual hormone with the poor reputation can encourage fair behaviours if this serves to ensure one's own status, reported Science Daily in 2009. 
The overall picture is inconclusive, and there are too many variables to categorically claim Roy to equal rage without taking into account other factors. The medical examiner at the time of the Benoit tragedy concluded that essentially, I think it's an unanswerable question. In other words, there is no evidence that Chris Benoit had roid rage, whatever that even means. Interestingly, WWE claimed he was clean of both anabolic steroids and testosterone when tested in the April, and toxicology suggests he'd only taken testosterone recently before the tragedy. There is some evidence that actually coming off steroids may cause depression and mood problems. With the newly implemented wellness policy, it's possible Benoit was on the least amount of steroids that he's been on in years. That could just as easily have played a role than roid rage. It simply doesn't hold up to scrutiny. The crime took place over three days. Nancy was bound, Daniel was sedated and Bibles were placed next to their bodies. This demonstrates Chris was in a deranged and depressive state but with the ability to plan and premeditate. A note was later discovered which read, I'm preparing to leave this earth. The key word being preparing. This was clearly not a burst of rage, but a deeper psychological problem. Toxicology also found that Benoit's system contained a combination of Xanax, a powerful psychoactive anti-anxiety and depression drug, and hydrocodone, an addictive semi-synthetic opioid-derived painkiller that bears relation to heroin. Side effects of Xanax include a loss of inhibitions, memory and concentration problems, drowsiness, and in some people, aggression, rage, mania, suicidal thoughts, and hallucinations. As weird as it sounds, a very common effect of anti-anxiety and depression medication is more anxiety and depression. The more you take it, the more the brain's fighting back, and the more you're creating anxiety. So in the studies that we use for FDA approval for Xanax, by eight weeks, the patients were worse. They were in serious withdrawal. Up to a third of them couldn't even get off the drug. After eight weeks, they couldn't get off the drug. Side effects of hydrocodone can also include changes in mood and anxiety. Empty bottles also suggest alcohol may have been a factor, though we can't say for sure because it would have already left the bodies before toxicology was performed. The thing that I'm really curious of is, you know, alcohol was found on the scene. And they said earlier that alcohol was found on the scene. And I guess that's just not sexy enough for the media. There's a, there's a person that has had a DUI who has had problems with alcohol before. And if you look in your federal penitentiaries, I'm sure there's a lot more people causing uh, violent crime on alcohol than but on steroids. The focus is there is a wide range of possible factors that played a role in, in determining Benoit's mental state. Roid rage is only one of them, and it's not supported by the evidence. Join us next time on the Chris Benoit Files, when we ask, did Chris Benoit have brain damage at the time of his death?